Today we're at the Western Museum of Flight in Torrance. Let's go see what Cindy has for us today. I'm here with Chris Rushing, and he just flew in this Hellcat. Where'd you fly it in from? From Camarillo, California. What's it like to fly? Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> it's a great honor to fly this wonderful airplane. Thank you for bringing it to Torrance Airport. It's amazing to see it. Well, it's my honor and pleasure. Can we have a walk around and Ab have an up-close look at it? Absolutely. One of the characteristics of all of the commemorative Air Force airplanes is the, is the wings with the Ghost Squadron and the CAF emblem and then the commemorative Air Force is written underneath almost all of our airplanes. And then underneath it is the classic World War II white star and bar that signifies that this airplane was in World War II. And then if you see this white stripe here, what it signifies is the foothold where you put your foot in and then the, where you put your hand in, and that's how you climb up on the airplane through these steps. And then on up towards the, underneath the canopy, those uh, Japanese flags represent enemy aircraft that were shot down in World War II. Not exactly this airplane, but if you look a little bit further, you see Mincy 3. Uh, this paint job is in replica of Commander Dave McCampbell. He flew Mincy 3, and he was a leading ace in the Pacific, so he actually had a little few more kills uh, an enemy aircraft shot down than that. So here we are at the tail of the F6F Hellcat and you'll see the commemorative Air Force written underneath the right horizontal stabilizer and then the registration numbers, we like to call it the N number. And this airplane has to be, happens to be 1078 Zulu. And then if you pan on up to the top of the rudder, you'll see the white stripe with the, the CAG. That meant that he was the commander of the aerial group. That meant he was in charge. They, they called him the CAG. And so only Dave McCampbell would have that, uh, that emblem on that airplane. This is the gun bay for the F6F Hellcat. If you look up forward to the leading edge, you can see the 350 cal guns. And this is where the ammo was stored inside this compartment. So when the airplane would come back from a mission, they would open this up and they would put the ammo in for the next flight. All right, most F6 Hellcats, all of them had the six 50 cal guns, three on each side of the leading edge of both wings. I already showed you the gun bay, the ammo bay, where, which is just behind the, uh, the barrels. So it's pretty interesting how they're all three different lengths, and that's so that they could all get fed by ammo. That's why they're all three different sizes. And you can tell it's a pretty tall airplane. This airplane weighs about 10,400 pounds. So she's sitting pretty tall and pretty. Uh, the front part is the most exciting part to me because that's where the engine and the propeller live. So you can see where the propeller's pretty close to the ground. So you always take off and land in a three-point attitude on this airplane. You never do what we call a wheel landing. You always do a tail landing, three-point landing on this aircraft or all F-6. Okay, like most World War II fighter airplanes and other airplanes, they have the same engine, and this is an R2800 Pratt & Whitney, 2,000 uh, horsepower, and the, the Hamilton Standard propeller, uh, the Hellcat has the three-bladed propeller uh, on, on this one. There's uh, three intakes for the air for the carburetors and one for the oil cooler on the front of the nose, and this engine is fairly new. It's, it's got about... 50 hours on it, so she's really, she's purring like a tomcat in a creamery. Okay, a couple of things uh, Betty wanted me to point out on the engine is this oil cooler flap here. So while you're on the ground, you open that, get maximum cooling for the oil, and then after flight, you retract those. And then up here is the engine cows, so you close those about halfway for takeoff, and then after takeoff, you'll go ahead and close them all the way. 
Okay, what we're going to look at now is the left main landing gear, which is very interesting on the F6F Hellcat. If when you actually go to retract the gear, the gear starts back and it actually turns 90 degrees, so then it fits flush up underneath the wing. And so most pilots are thinking, well, then when that thing turns, what sensation do you feel? Well, actually, the airplane slows down because there's a lot of drag from the landing gear door, putting a lot of parasite drag onto the wind. So until the landing gear gets totally retracted, uh, you get a little bit of a slowdown, and then it's real easy to get that speed right back. But it is pretty interesting how that gear does come up and turn 90 degrees uh, when it starts its uh, retract travel and then Betty you'll see this little hook right here and that hook is for the catapult when this thing would get catapulted off of an aircraft carrier they would hook the hook on the, the cable and that's what actually would uh, launch the aircraft this would be the hook here so they would put the cable around it and then it would go down to the deck of the carrier and then when it would launch it would shoot it off and then fall out the back of the hook for a successful catapult as I mentioned uh, on the left wing, here's the other hook, catapult hook for the right side. And like I said, this gear does the same thing as the other one. When it retracts, it turns 90 degrees. Okay, so I showed you the catapult hooks that would launch it. Well, the airplane's got to land on the carrier, so it also would have a tail hook. Our aircraft is not equipped with a tail hook at the moment, but that's where it would go back here. So when landing, you would be able to extend the tail hook and then catch uh, the, the cable for landing. All right, guys, now I'd like to show you the cockpit of the F6F Hellcat. And we'll start from the left and work our way around. Here is a very important handle. It's the tail wheel lock. So you actually steer with this airplane with it unlocked, so you use brake differential. So once you get on the runway and you're ready to take off, you move this to the lock position, and then the tail wheel locks, and that helps the airplane stay straight. So after landing, when you want to turn off the runway, it's locked now, you would go to the unlock position, and that enables you to turn off the runway. This airplane has trim for all three axes. So here's your rudder trim, here's your elevator trim, and here's your aileron trim. So these are all very nice to have in flight so you can keep the airplane trimmed up to be nice and smooth. Now here's that oil cooler shutter handle and the cow flaps that I was showing you earlier. These are the handles that open and close those. So the cow flaps you close about halfway before takeoff and then right after takeoff you close them the rest of the way. Now this lever here is for the propeller. This is a constant speed prop in, in engine. So this is the lever that you use to control the prop. Here's the mixture. So once the engine starts, you go to full rich on it. Here's the throttle. This is what controls manifold pressure. And this is the handle that control the supercharger. But on this particular aircraft, we've removed the supercharger. It's just not necessary for the uh, type of flying that we do. There's the Hobbs meter keeps track of the time of the flight and that is triggered from the gear so once the gear comes up then the hob starts here's the flap control switch so flap speed is about 175 knots so you just flip that switch down when you're ready to drop the flaps and then they just come down on their own as the airspeed dissipates the flaps just creep down on their own so it's just a two position switch up or down and then the flaps will come down as the airspeed uh, dissipates for landing here's the gear handle so to go to raise the gear you slide this red handle over and then raise the gear Here's your three gear indicator lights. Let's see if I can turn the battery on. So you got three greens down and locked. So the two mains and then the tail wheel has a gear indicator. So on this airplane, the tail wheel is retractable. And then over here is the fuel quantity indicators. You got the two left mains and the auxiliary tank indicator. Here's a G meter. And then coming on up the instrument panel, here's the mag switch. We're currently in the off position. And as uh, most of you pilots know that uh, this is what turns the ignition on and off for the spark plugs. And here's the whiskey compass, altimeter, airspeed indicator, directional gyro. There is a VOR head, turn and bank, vertical speed indicator. And then there's an attitude indicator, 
RPM indicator and manifold pressure. So these are two real important instruments that we watch the engine performance. So at cruise, we run about 2,000 RPM and 30 inches. And then for takeoff, it's 2,700 RPM and 50 inches is for takeoff. So you see the red line about 52, but we try to keep her under 50 because we'd like to baby the engine. Here's your radio, more an advanced radio than what they had in World War II. Uh, as long as you guys probably recognize this, the old Garmin 496. Never leave home without your Garmin 496. Uh, it really helps to be able to navigate around uh, Los Angeles. Coming around the right side, as some of you guys may know what this is, it's a breakaway axe. So in the event that you did a crash landing and you forgot to open your canopy or were unable to open it, you pull this pin out and you pull this axe out. So here in the event that you were shot down and you were unable to open your canopy before you crash landed, here is that axe that I opened, that I unmounted, and I have it here. And so the pilot would be able to break open the canopy and be able to escape the airplane very quickly. All fighter pilots love to have a stick, not a yoke, and there's the F6F Hellcat is no different. Here's the stick for your, your uh, elevator control and your aileron control. And this uh, control is... Uh, is it's not very much pressure at all. I grew, I learned how to fly uh, the AT6 Texan, and the stick pressure is quite a bit more than on the Hellcat. So once you get off the ground and get flying, it takes very little pressure to maneuver this airplane with this, with this wonderful stick. Okay, Betty, here we're going to demonstrate on folding the wings. The F6F Hellcat does have the ability to fold the wings quite a bit, actually. The wingspan right now is about 40 feet, and once both wings get folded, it's about 24 feet. So there's considerable amount of space saved by folding the wings, and naturally on the, on the aircraft carrier, every inch was valuable. So that's why the, the Grumman made this uh, F6F Hellcat to where you can fold the wing. So we'll demonstrate that for you here real soon. Okay guys, now we're going to demonstrate, of, it's called folding the wings. So we'll do the left one first. There's a man in the cockpit operating the controls that's going to undo the pin. And then we have another man down below which is going to actually do the locking mechanism. So I'm going to go get out on the wing and catch the wing. When the holding rod comes out, the wing will swing. So we'll demonstrate on how the folding of the wing takes place on the F6F Hellcat. Okay guys, the left wing is folded. Let's move over and do the right side. Okay guys, now we're gonna do the right wing. The guy in the cockpit's gonna pressurize the hydraulics to undo the locking pin. And then the guy in the wheel wheel is gonna hold the locking pin. So here we go, stand by. Thank you, Chris, for giving us a walk around of the Hellcat here at the Western Museum of Flight. Any last comments? Well, that's the way it's done, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to let me introduce you to the F6F Hellcat. It's been my honor. We're from the Commemorative Air Force in Camarillo, California.